Car cleaning is one of those divisive things. You either like it or you hate it. I used to be one half, alongside Harry, of a detailing company, and we used to spend anywhere from a day to a full week on something like this Porsche or Ferrari. We did lots of those. One thing I took from doing that detailing over the years is that if you do the car properly, if you do like a deep clean, then you will get a lot of that time back again in the preceding weeks and months. Because if it's cleaned, decontaminated and protected properly, then you just have to give it a quick top up, give it a quick wash and it's looking good again, especially through winter, which we're about to enter. If you are one of those in-betweeners, you don't particularly love cleaning cars, you don't hate cleaning cars, but you do like a clean car. That's what this video's for. That and making car cleaning products tax deductible. <clears throat> I need to give this a bloody good clean and then I want it to get to the point where all I have to do is give it a quick wash because at the end of the day it ain't a Ferrari it's the same at me that's why I'm using this particular car in the video it doesn't have to be anything special sometimes you like to have a clean car which camp are you in are you in the I'm just gonna leave it I don't care camp or do you want yours just clean or are you like real in a level detailing sort of nerd Anyway, we're not here to moan at people who don't clean their cars. Let's get on with this. It is relatively quick, it's simple, and I'm using the basic products. What products to use is probably the most common question or things that are searched for. So I'll tell you everything that I'll be using, but at the end of the day, you can use almost anything you like. You don't have to be a, a product snob, as it were. If it's got a known brand on it, Auto Glim is the obvious one, everybody's heard of that, and they pretty much do well, everything, they've got an entire range, then that's fine. You don't have to go for this for that part of the car, this for that part of the car, unless you really, really want to. And there's nothing wrong with doing that, but essentially, let's keep this nice and simple. I'll put the link in the description below of what I use. There's an Amazon link, there'll be a link to any website, essentially, if you do want to use what I've used. Again, as long as it's a known brand, I will stick with that. So I'll be using maybe a little bit of Autoglim stuff, G-Technic, I highly rate those things. And this is a relatively new product for me. And I should point out there's no sponsorship in this at all. These are all mine. Uh, it's called Gloss Fuel. They've got a range of products. It's not just one thing. But the reason I like this is because one is bespoke stuff. A lot of the car cleaning things out there are somebody else's product rebadged to, you know, marketing, whatever. You know, it, it's someone else's that's just in a different box. That is their own. They've created that product in a lab, I imagine, or something like that, with white coat. But they do pouches. And I don't know why this has never been a thing in the car cleaning industry. Because pouches are nothing, you know, refills. They're nothing new, but they, no one else does it. So, for example, once I finish with this from Autoglim, I will throw it in the bin and then get some more. So I'm always getting this container and throwing them away. Whereas with this, I'll just refill... Yeah, well, not that one, but I will refill whatever container I want with gloss enhancing shampoo um, and then, well, scrunch this down to nothing. It's fully recyclable and, well, there's less waste. Again, refills are nothing new, so why is it only now that somebody's actually thought, well, why don't we do that with car cleaning products? So, yeah, I thought it was worthy of a mention anyway. Gloss fuel. One thing that you have to get is lots of these brushes, detailing brushes. Get about five of the things. They're really not very expensive at all. I use one for the outside, one for the inside, one for the wheels, uh, and then a couple of spare ones, essentially. But that's how you get into all the nooks and crannies, which I'll show you in a minute, because a sponge just goes over things. It doesn't actually get into everything you need it to. Doing the inside is simplicity in itself. All you need is a clean detailing brush, a clean microfiber, another clean microfiber, and some clean warm water. Warm water is very important because it helps keep your hands warm. This is why I use the G-Technic Tri-Clean stuff, because you can use it on pretty much any surface, including leather. Now, don't get me wrong, if I had a high-end leather interior, I would probably use proper leather cleaner. But in this case, it will work for the majority of stuff out there, especially as most of the leather seats in modern cars aren't leather at all. They're more, well, plastic. Like Tesla's vegan leather. It's just plastic. It also doesn't leave a shine on the dashboard and places like that. I hate products. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. 
when it just makes it all shiny and glossy. It's, it's very 80s, it's awful. So this just cleans, that's all I want. I want it to be clean, nothing more. Just give the brush a little bit of a rinse so it's slightly damp and just spray it on. Don't worry about getting the interior a little bit damp or anything like that. There we go. Brush gets in all the little nooks and crannies, it agitates the dirt off and then, uh, well, I'll wipe it off, you'll see in a second. But effectively, all the little bits that a cloth wouldn't get into, that's what the brush is for. Now get the damp cloth from the uh, clean water, squeeze it dry as, as much as you can, and then just wipe everything down. Just basically getting rid of all the stuff that you've cleaned off. This is not difficult. Anyone can do it, and it doesn't particularly take a long time. I reckon if I wasn't filming, each door would probably take about two minutes. Next, dry cloth. Basically dry it off, give it a buff. And that's it. Pretty straightforward, really. Rinse and repeat, as I said before. Move on to the next door, the boot lid, the door, the door, then the inside of the car, the dashboard, break it up into bits. So you know which bits you've done. Anything, any surface, it'll clean. Do it in the same manner until you're finished. I don't know what has been going on in this car. But it's absolutely filthy. It's like they've been rallying or something like that. Ugh. When you are doing the glass first, don't worry about overspray because you've been doing this anyway. So just get it done. Glass cleaner is not going to do anything to the dashboard. It's actually a quite effective cleaner, to be honest. So it won't hurt anything. Of course, a bigger windscreen I would probably do in two bits. It's not actually too bad this one. And then do it again at the end. Don't be afraid about getting cleaning product everywhere. That's how you get into all those little nooks and crannies that just gather dust. So it's essentially the same as the door, just on the dash. Damp cloth again, wipe it down. That feels really good. Finally, the drying cloth, essentially. Just go over all the bits, try and dry it off. Cold weather makes it a little harder, but you can turn the car heater on, I guess. Right, there we go. Soon well done. Now I'll move on to the dash, binnacle, break it up into bits so you know where you've been, and then move down to all these bits. You see cats and dogs leave hairs all over the place. It's not, it's daughters and wives that leave hairs everywhere. You can see there what the brush is doing. All these bobbly bits in the hard plastic, working the dirt out of them. So in this case, I'm just going to spray it onto this. And then work my way in from that. Sometimes with the touchscreen, you have to finish it off with glass cleaner. Just because it, it works better. Like, you know, it's like glass, isn't it? You can get rid of the fingerprints easier, but I want to clean it first. Then I can worry in about polishing it later, so to speak. A little bit of glass cleaner. And of course, don't forget, the only button has to point upwards. Do this separately, whack it back in, done. I think you're all familiar with the vacuum cleaner and how they work. I don't have to, I don't have to show you this bit, do I? It's just vacuuming, normal vacuuming. Something that people spend far too much time on and get a worse result, in my opinion. You see loads of videos saying, do this, do that, you know, brush it, get all the shampoo on. There's a far simpler way. Get all the bits of stones off, all the little, you know, bits of wood, all the crap that you bring into the car. Then once you've done that, Excuse me. Just basically put it in a wash bag and put it in your washing machine. It'll easily fold up, quick wash, no conditioner, because it'll smell like a laundrette then. And that's gonna clean it better than anything. And it takes you two minutes. 
You're going to have to wait, obviously, until potentially the next day before it's properly dry, but you're not going to get any cleaner. And if you don't want to use your own washing machine or you've got massive mats or something, take it to your local laundrette. Right, as far as I'm concerned, the inside is done. Now the outside. But let me show you what the rinse clean water now looks like after just cleaning a relatively clean car. It wasn't that bad. There you go. I mean, that is, well, filthy. I would normally have emptied it for clean water, but I wanted to just show you by leaving it all in um, what you're actually pulling off the inside of a car. And again, it's quick, it's easy, it's very effective, as you can see. For the outside, I'm just gonna start off with a quick pre-rinse snow foam. I think, again, most people are familiar with that, and it's the only thing I would strongly recommend you to buy, one of these things. A snow foam lance. You just put it on at the end of your jet wash, and believe me, it speeds things up no end. Get a decent one. Don't cheap out one of these. It's gonna be 40, 50 quid probably, but it'll last for many, many years. Get a cheap one or one that goes through a hose pipe and you'll wish you hadn't. It's buy it shite, buy it twice sort of thing. Wheels are another one of those things that people spend far too much money on in terms of various products. A cloth to do it by hand and a brush. That's all you need. And some cleaner, of course, to clean the wheels. There's a billion types of alloy wheel brushes and you think, well, it's just not worth it really, it's just faffy. Don't forget the tyre as well. Tyre shine does not adhere to the rubber if it's covered in, well, crap. So just a quick brush over and then the tyre shine will last twice as long. I'll get this jet washed off now, the pre-rinse. I've done one wheel. I'll finish the rest off, I think you know what that looks like, so I don't have to get that filmed. Uh, and then I'll start on the bodywork. Right, so now I'm going to clean the bonnet. And what I do to the bonnet is what I effectively, I'm going to do off camera to the rest of the car. So I've pre-washed it, I've jet washed it, and I'm just going to give it your traditional wash. Um, and then I'm going to clay it, panel wipe it, give it another rinse down, and then protect it. Brush first for all the nooks and crannies. So the grill, for example, you're never going to get a sponge in a grill. So that's what this is for. The window shuts, the badge, everything, effectively, that's got a corner, I suppose, it has got an edge to it, there's the panel joints, do with this. Much, much easier than a sponge. In fact, you'll never get a sponge or anything like that down there. you never get in the crevices. If you do this with each wash as well, just a quick run around, it helps keep it a lot better. You might have to reapply the shampoo if you've taken too long with the brush. But with the uh, jet wash foam lance, it's a doddle. I'm now going to clear the car, which essentially is just as it sounds if you've never heard of it before. It's a piece of clay which you rub over the paintwork and it removes the contaminants, tar, things like that, and any wax or sealant as well. So it's going to, if you ever do this, you're going to have to re protect any car. But essentially, never do it on a dry car. I don't just mean wet it, you need some sort of lubricant. And the easiest, cheapest thing to do this, and it's just as effective, is shampoo. Now, I have to say, for the, a lease car, or an ex-lease car, for two years anyway, it's been surprisingly well looked after. So let's see what this brings out of just the bonnet. But effectively, I'll be doing this over the entire car. So that's the back of the clay. You can see it's picked out just get rid of the soap. Quite a, you know, a reasonable amount of contaminants. And now it feels super smooth. So what I'm gonna do after I've cleared it is just give it a quick wash again and then jet wash it again. Right, the car has been washed several times, cleared. It's essentially ready now to be protected after you've contaminated it. This next part is probably one of the most crucial bits considering what we're trying to achieve. Longevity of the protection, so when you do a quick wash, it's just that, a quick wash, and it lasts for as long as possible. For that, I need 
some of this. It's essentially called panel wipe. This one is called pre-wax cleaner. Uh, effectively, it's like IPA. So it removes the residue of whatever, if anything, is on here. So the reason behind this is essentially because wax is designed to sit on pain. In fact, let me get some. So when this wax, or any wax, or sealant, or ceramic coating, whatever it is you're using, it's designed to effectively adhere to paint. Wax, paint. Not wax, shampoo, residue, and then paint. Not wax, uh, old wax, and then the paint. So effectively, what you're doing by waxing a car that's just been washed, for example, because a lot of shampoos have you know, sealants and various other glossiness factors to them, which leave a residue on there to make the paint shinier. All that does is mean that the wax doesn't bond to the paint as effectively as it can, which reduces its longevity. It doesn't last as long in terms of protection. So, well, if you've ever got some wax and people have said, oh, it's really good is this stuff, and you've, you've done it and you thought, well, it only lasted a week or two, that's crap. It's probably because it's bonding to things that are in between the paint and the wax, like greasy shampoo or sealants or whatever that's been left on. That's why it's so important to effectively take it back to the paint. And that's what this does. The claying that I've used and a quick wash was the last thing I did to it. So there again, there's gonna be residue on there. There's gonna be shampoo and various other stuff. This will get rid of that and then effectively just evaporate like IPA does. So it prepares the bodywork, so to speak, for waxing, sealants, ceramic coating, whatever. And again, without that, the bonding just isn't gonna work as well. So if you waxed your car a couple of months ago and it still beads a little bit, putting some wax on top of that after washing it, it's just, you effectively, you're not wasting your time, it will look better and it will protect it to a point, but it will last nowhere near as long. That's the whole point of this video. If you do this once, you won't have to do it anywhere near as often in the future. Under normal circumstances, I'd be machine polishing this because it's black and then ceramic coating it. But I wanted to make sure that everything I do, everything I use in this video is easily obtainable by anybody. You can just go online and click, you know, the gloss fuel stuff, the this stuff, the G-Technic things. Anyone can do it. Anyone can buy it and it doesn't require any special skills, knowledge or anything like that. Whereas ceramic coating does, machine polishing does. Right, it's now time to protect the car. Some people prefer sealant, some people prefer waxes. In this case, I'm sticking with waxes because I'm a bit old school on that. Sealants are very good. I just, I don't know. I prefer the application of these and the way that they rub off. They tend as well to look a little bit better only sealants tend to probably last a bit longer. It depends on which you use, of course. At this stage, you can pretty much use whatever you've got. If you've got Autoglin wax, if you've got unknown brand wax or sealant, use that. Just read the instructions, follow them, and you'll get as good as that can give you. The only thing I will say is that if you get any like spray wax, it's not very good. Spray wax, it's all right in between washes, but for something like this, bin it. If you see something that says ceramic coating in a spray bottle, it's not even close. I don't know how they can sell that, quite frankly, and put that on the front of the bottle. If you do want any recommendations, I like a bit of Built Hamber. I believe they're a British company that make the wax and it probably it looks a bit better than this one and it lasts a decent amount of time. But the overall winner for me, and it's been this for many, many years, is Colonite 476S. It's cracking stuff. It's designed originally, I believe, for the uh, marine industry, something like that. I have to say, if you do this properly, you'll get six months out of it, possibly a year, depending on what mileage and where the car's kept. But out of a wax, this is one of the longest lasting ones out there for me. When it comes to the windscreen, I never ever, and there's two trains of thought on this, but I never ever put anything on the windscreen because for me, the wipers just smear it over time. I don't care about driving down the motorway and driving rain and it's sheeting off. You're gonna be using these at some point. For me personally, clean it, clay it, get it, you know, just get it clean and leave it at that. And if you're unlucky, depending on how you've applied it, it can judder as well, like do, 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 do. Some people have done that and it's driven them mad and you gotta wait for it to just go. Another mistake a lot of people make is piling on the wax. 
or sealant or whatever. So if you think slacking it on and really piling it on is a good thing, you're just wasting your own money, wasting your own time, and making it harder to buff off. All you want is to wipe it like that and a nice thin layer because once you buff it off, all that's left on it is a very thin layer. So literally scooping wax out and slacking it on, you, you, anything that's above that thin layer, you're just wasting. That took 15 minutes. I've left it the appropriate time, whilst I was just finishing a bit of the interior, and now I'm just buffing it off. And then after that, we're essentially done, and I can show you around. But effectively, this should mean that I'll get through the winter into hopefully spring, where I'll do it again, and doing it in spring, going into the nicer weather, might, depending on the mileage and where it's kept, etc., etc., get me through back to autumn again, which is now. Okay, job done. 15 minutes later, wax is off, car is protected, and that should, as I said, See me through till spring. Uh, we've just a quick top up every week or two or three, whatever, you know, because again, time is precious. There she is, nice and shiny. Again, quick job, relatively speaking. The mats are, are nice and clean and don't smell at all. Perfect, it took, what, five minutes to put them in the washing machine and they're all done. Well, that's it guys, she's done. She's clean, she's protected. This should do me now, as I said many times before, until we get to spring when I'll do it again. So two big cleans a year and the rest is just quick top-ups. Oh no, it's raining, God's sake. Any questions, comments, all the usual stuff, then feel free to ask. Is this something you do? Do you hate cleaning your car? Do you like it? Let me know. This was, again, essentially just designed for somebody who wants to clean car but doesn't have enough time to do it really anally. I think that's most people though, isn't it? We want a clean car, we just don't want to put the effort in to get it. Life gets in the way. Without the filming, if I took all that out of the way, this would have probably taken me two and a half to three hours to do everything you've just seen inside and out. You get kind of practiced at it. On the bigger car, you know, the Tesla for example, that's probably gonna be three or four hours. But for me, those few hours are well worth it because then it's just, again, a quick blow over, car's clean again. This is, as I said, the car cleaning video for those that want it clean but don't have the time. So thank you ever so much for watching. Um, see you later. Oh, don't forget about driving home and like, subscribe and all that sort of crap.